31, we're back. Example three, same directions. We wanna find some X and Y intercepts. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna again start with the Y intercept because it's typically the easier one. So anytime I wanna find a Y intercept, I will let X equal zero. All right, so let's see what we get back out. If I plug zero in, this term zeroes out, zeroes out, zeroes out. So I get zero back out. So that tells me why Y intercept is the ordered pair zero comma zero. All right, so again, remember, anytime you give me an intercept, it's a point on a graph. So I need the x and y coordinate. All right, the x intercepts are a little bit trickier. I have an x to the fourth. Um, so I have a degree four polynomial, which means at most I'm gonna find four zeros. I could find fewer than that, but I, I'm gonna find at most four. So let's see what we have here to find an x intercept. I'm going to let y equal zero. And because we're using function notation, that means f of x is equal to zero. So I'm gonna set my entire function to zero. Okay, um, oops, excuse me, I left off an x. So if I wanna factor this, let me go forward and move out the, or factor out the GCF. They, I can see this has a power of x in it. So I'm gonna go x cubed minus 19x plus 30. And you might say to yourself, okay, let me try that u substitution like we did in example one. If I was gonna try that, you always let your u equal the middle term, right? So if u is x, then u squared would be x squared. But the problem is, this is not an x squared, right? These powers aren't matching up, so I can't use a u sub. And I, I don't have a formula for you for factoring a cubic. There is a way to do it, but it's not worth memorizing the formula. It's not as nice as the quadratic formula. So when it comes to something like this, we're gonna head over to our calculator to have our calculator help us out. Because at this point, all I can see is that if I have two terms multiplying to zero, either x was zero or x cubed minus 19x plus 30 was zero. So from this factor, I know I get a zero at zero. But from this factor, I don't know yet, All right? And I have a cubic, so I have up to three more x values to include. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to my computer and we're gonna use our calculator to help us find those zeros. And then I'm gonna flip back to my paper here and we'll finish up the problem. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye. Hey, Mount 31, let's take a look at example three with our calculators. So your calculator can help you find these x-intercepts and it can be super helpful. Um, and like always, first thing you wanna do, factor out a GCF, right? But to find an x-intercept, I wanna let y equal zero, or in this case, set my function to zero. And we ran into that problem where we knew this factor was giving us an x-intercept at x equaling zero, so our ordered pair zero, zero. But how, how could we do this one, right? We can't factor it. You can't use a u-sub because the exponent on this middle term is one and the exponent on this high degree term is three and it's not got that two to one ratio, right? We need whatever the exponent here, I need to double it to get here and that just didn't work, which is fine. Now you could use the cubic formula and I'm gonna pop this up. We know the quadratic formula, right? We know negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus four ac all over 2a. But take a look at the cubic formula. All right, so here they are talking about the quadratic, right? But now when you have a cubic, when you have ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equaling zero, look at this formula. I mean, take a look at what you would have to do to solve for your zeros. It would be awful. It is not worth it. So we're not gonna do that. We have technology. Um, so we're going to use it now. If you're bored and it's like Friday night, you're like, hmm, I'm going to give this a go, go for it and let me know how it goes. I've used this once in my life back in college and now I'm like hard pass, don't want to do that again. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and put our original function into our y equals. And if you're wondering what the directions are, I wrote them all here for you. But let me go to my y equals. And as I look at my my computer calculator, um, I'm, I've got a plot on, so I'm gonna hit the up arrow key. Right now you can see it's flashing on plot one and plot one has the black background. If I hit enter, you see it no longer has the black background, I've turned it off. And that's equivalent to when you're in your stats plots, 
of toggling this thing on and off, right? If I toggle this back on and I go to my y equals, you see it's back on, right? But this is just a different way of turning your plots on and off. All right, let me type in my original function. So it was, I think, x to the fourth minus 19x squared plus 30x. All right, I've got that in there. Now, since I did have a plot on, I have a feeling my window's a little messed up. So let me go ahead and reset it with a zoom six. And okay, I can't quite see the entire function. It is a cortex, so I know it's going to have a, a W shape because it's a quartic polynomial with a positive lead coefficient, so it should look like a W. I can see one of the mins here. I can't see the max, and I cannot see the min here. Let me adjust my window. I usually go by factors of 10. I don't need any more in the x direction because I could see all of those x-intercepts, but I couldn't see enough in the y direction, so I'll just add zeros here. All right, and I'm going to hit graph. I don't want to hit zoom 6. If I hit zoom 6, it'll just reset these back to 10s. Okay, well, I can again, I can see my zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4. These are getting a little bit harder to see. I still can't see my bottom. Not that you have to. I just want to show you how you can go hunting for a window. I got a lot closer. So let me go just lower my Y min. I'll try negative 200. See how that looks. Okay, so now I can see my min, which is great, and I can see three of the zeros, but it, do you see how it's actually that much harder now to see the fourth zero, or the, these two zeros, because everything's so scrunched. So that's the disadvantage to seeing the, the complete graph, is that sometimes this data gets scrunched. All right, and that, that's all fine and good, but let me find one of these zeros with you. If I was counting, it looks like it's at one, two, three, four, five, so it looks like it's at negative five to me, and I'm not sure that it is exactly at negative five, so let me check it. So I'm gonna hit second, trace, and then I'm gonna hit option two. If it's at negative five, I need to pick a number to the left of that. So negative six is left of negative five on the x-axis, I'll hit enter. Um, you, I could pick negative four here, that's to the right of my zero. And then I can hit enter through guess, and my calculator will just tell me negative five. Now here, I, I chose on your paper to do negative six and negative two. That would have worked as well. So I can do second trace option two. Left of that zero is negative six. Right of that zero is negative two. And you can see the two little triangles that my calculator is giving me. It's saying I'm gonna find the x-intercept between this x value and this x value. And if I hit enter, I'm good to go. And you can use a lot of different numbers, right? I could have done negative seven to the left and I could have done negative two to the right. The thing you don't wanna do is when you're, if you're trying to find this zero, you don't wanna go too far to the right. So I don't wanna go past this X coordinate because let's say I picked negative seven or negative six here and one here. Do you see if I go from negative six to positive one, I've trapped two X intercepts your calculator just gets a little confused. Then it's not sure which one you're asking for. So just try and stay close enough to those um, that, that specific zero. Now for this one, these two in here, I would probably actually reset this to zoom six because it was easier for me to see the two distinct zeros. So here they look like they're at two and three. So I could hit second trace option two. And again, you can use Blinky. I'm gonna use Blinky this time just to show you. this point is left of this x-intercept, so I'll hit enter. I will move to the right of that x-intercept, hit enter, and then hit enter through guess. Right? And I can do that for the next one also. I can use Blinky. I need to go to the left of my x-intercept, but I want to make sure I'm past this x-intercept because I'm trying to find this last one here. So that is to the left of this last x-intercept, hit enter, go to the right. I gotta get past it. There we go. Hit enter and enter through guess. And the last thing you could do, if you, if you really thought it hit at a whole number, you can also just calculate the value there. I could hit second trace in option one, and let me plug in x equaling three, and my calculator says, sure enough, you have an x-intercept because y is zero. So we've got all of those options in there for you, and I wrote that all up here. So if you ever wanna take a look at, your, um, at what your calculator's doing, uh, or your calculator commands, I've always got them written up for you. All right, so with that, we're gonna, Head on back to example three. I'll see you in a few. Bye.
Okay, gang, we're back. I know we just took a look at this on my computer, but I, I just want to reiterate how to make your calculator work for you. So I plugged my function into my y equals. I'm expecting, because of degree 4, that I might see four x-intercepts. Let me hit zoom 6, and I see what 1, 2, 3, 4. So there are four of them in here. I already know the 0 at 0. Now, just keep in mind, I can't see this low point here. Right? I know that this is a quartic with a positive lead coefficient, so it kind of looks like a W. I know that, but I can't see the bottom part of this W. I, and I'm not necessarily interested in it for the, given the directions in example three, but I'll come back to it and talk about it. Now, if I count these, one, two, three, four, five, it looks like this is happening at negative five, it looks like this is happening at two, and it looks like this is three. But just because it looks that way doesn't mean I should do it. So let me go through and say, well, I think this is happening at negative 5. So I'm going to hit second, trace, option 2. If this is negative 5, what's a great number to the left of negative 5? Negative 6. What's a great number to the right of negative 5? Well, we chose negative 2 when I did it on my computer, but I want you to see other options. I could pick negative 4. And then I can hit enter through guess, and sure enough, it's lighting up at negative 5, 0. So I have here that x is equal to negative 5. That's 1. Okay. I already knew x equaling 0. This one is at 2, or at least I think it's at 2. So I'm going to hit second trace, option 2. All right, a number to the left of 2 is 1. I don't want to go much further because I, I don't want to pass this other 0. When, if I were to make my left bound negative 1 right now, my calculator is going to get confused because it won't know which x-intercept I want. So let me go here at 1. And to me, this looks like it's in between 2 and 3, so a number between 2 and 3 would be 2.5. Again, I don't want my right bound to be too far to the right because then my calculator will get confused. I'll hit enter through guess, and there we go. I'm getting x equaling 2. And then last but not least, I think the next one's at 3, so I'll go 2.5 to 4, and it is at 3. Now, if I wanted to confirm this in a different way, I could have hit second, traced, I could have hit option 1, and then just plugged in negative 5, since that was my guess. I see the y value 0, so that one's solid. I could plug in number 2, or x equaling 2, I get a y equaling 0. It confirms that's an x-intercept. And I could have plugged in 3 and gotten that 0 back out. So that's just a different way to check for x-intercepts. All right, but going through this, right? So my x-intercepts now, I remember that they are ordered pairs. So I have one at 0, 0, negative 5, 0, 2, 0, and 3, 0. All right, so here are my x-intercepts. All right. So when we get to a polynomial that we cannot factor, all right, I know I have a bunch of arrows, then I want to say use your calculator. Use some technology. All right. Technology is here to stay, so make sure we know how to use it and when to use it. Okay. So with that, we're going to flip over to example four, and I'm going to start to talk about multiplicities. All right, multiplicities in terms of what are the multiplicities of each of these zeros, and it helps us determine did our function cross the x-axis or touch the x-axis. And you can look at these and see that each zero crossed the x-axis, right? I went from above to below, then below to above, above to below, below to above. Oh, and before I piece out of here, right? I said I would talk about the minimum. I can't quite see that minimum, but my guess is it happens somewhere around negative 2, negative 3. It's somewhere in between this 0 of negative 5 and this 0 of 0. And if I wanted to see it, I would need to adjust my y minimum. And you can start guessing, like you could guess negative 100. Is that enough to see it? It's really not. All right, I'm actually going to calculate the minimum. I'm going to hit second trace option 3 for minimum. I think it's in between the zeros of negative 5 and 0. And when I hit enter, it looks like my, oh, my minimum value is actually negative 188. So I'm going to extend this. I'm going to make this negative 200. And I'll go up to 100 just to even it out. 
when I hit graph, I should get a pretty good looking graph at this point. Yeah, there's my cortic. And you can see it's kind of got a W shape. This is a much lower minimum than this one, but okay. And my zeros crossing, 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 crossing the x-axis. All right, so we're gonna flip to the next example and learn about multiplicities. I'll see you in a bit, bye.